to Kawun Kakar, the former advisor to the Afghan president. Good to have you on the show, sir. How much of an impact will this withdrawal of a third of the U.S. troops that are currently in Afghanistan have on the battlefield? I mean, this has been part of a long-going discussion. In fact, uh, close to a year ago, the president sent a letter to President Trump uh, offering to engage them on a kind of a reduction of U.S. forces to reduce their costs of presence here. Overall, I think in the past several years, the Afghan forces have actually uh, improved in their um, quality, they're better equipped, the Air Force has expanded. So I think, uh, and the, the U.S. forces are mainly providing advisory services, conducting some special operations, and providing air support, which is crucial. So with those responsibilities, the reduction of 4,000, it is estimated that it will not be actually uh, making a major impact in the posture or in uh, no fulfilling those new requirements and operations. But, the, of course, the bigger question is uh, what kind of an impact uh, would it have in the long run? It is, what is this is part of a larger peace plan, uh, larger kind of a, how many years it will take, what would other steps will be taken to bring any drastic change uh, on the ground? What impact do you think that this decision uh, or this, this thought by Ashraf Ghani have on the ongoing U.S. Taliban talks uh, in Doha? I think the aim here is to uh, offer an alternative. I think uh, that if those talks between the U.S. and Taliban do not uh, kind of reach conclusion as perhaps expected, that there is another way as well where the U.S. can uh, reduce its presence. It can take uh, perhaps uh, more on its own timetable to withdraw its forces. So uh, that is, uh, I think it's more at this time, kind of a, an alternative to the U.S. Taliban talk. But the U.S. Taliban talk have been going on for close to two years. It seems by all the kind of reports that are emerging that they're in the last stages and uh, that it may be even kind of, we may be weeks away from the signing them. Uh, so, uh, but again, this, uh, I mean, things just last, last time, they were interrupted. If there's some last minute interruption or or kind of no breakdown in the talks, that this could be an alternative. I think the Afghan government is pushing its uh, no preferred option. I think the Afghan government, in, uh, as is clear, is not too pleased with the U.S.-Taliban okay. talks as they have proceeded. Uh, it feels excluded, and it feels that the kind of the timetable may be rushed. Cohen, I want to ask you a little bit about terminology, because I'm a bit confused here. Over the talks in Doha, the Taliban refuses to a sort of a, a permanent ceasefire. Instead, it wants something that it's calling a reduction in violence. What exactly is a reduction in violence? How does that differ from a ceasefire? Well, that is a, I mean, that's a million dollar question. I think, uh, I, I don't think anybody is really, really clear what that word means. I think, uh, what is behind it is, I think, number one, there's the aspirations of Afghans for a ceasefire is very strong, I think. Uh, but I think those who are involved in the talks kind of uh, seem to think that, uh, that at this time, Taliban are reluctant and will not agree to a ceasefire. Basically, violence uh, or pursuing violence is one of their, their most important card, that they will probably lay that t towards the end of any kind of a agreement rather than at the beginning. The ceasefire would, uh, again, there are even talks what that means. I think, number one, it means, uh, I'm sorry, no reduction in violence. It means that, uh, number one, they will not be targeting the U.S. forces uh, after the agreement is signed. Number two, I think there may be some talks of that there will be uh, not large attacks or attacks in the major urban areas, uh, but uh, that said, on the other hand, some have argued that actually, while they are speaking of reduction of violence, in fact, it may be more or less ceasefire, but they don't want to call it ceasefire because some of the Taliban uh, commanders okay. 
are not comfortable with it, opposed to okay. it. So, uh, but we will have to wait and see it. Okay, Kaur, I have about a minute left in the program. I want to ask you: the results of the presidential election are still being; uh, uh, con they're not finalized yet. Do you feel that this announcement of the withdrawal of one third Correct. of the U.S. troops will have any bearing on this? I think, uh, I mean, over the results will come out in the next uh, in a couple of weeks. The offer of reduction and the talks between the U.S. and Taliban, I think they've been ongoing. I think in the next few weeks, we will not probably see kind of a very clear uh, say, uh, decision on this reduction. I think it's part of an ongoing. Afghanistan overall is going through a very critical time. These are some of the options on the table that are being uh, considered. And I think uh, all sides, uh, the international sides and the Afghan sides are kind of uh, offering proposals and see which one gets greater traction and perhaps uh, to, to take the peace process or and also the reduction of the U.S. forces, this idea forward. All right. Former advisor to the Afghan president, Kawun Kakar, thank you for very much for joining us here on the News Hour.